Hello, it's Mark and welcome to my studio. Uh, today I'm going to talk about some spring projects. Uh, first one is um, a spring wreath. I've used one of Donna's uh, spring recipe card packs. Um, actually no, it's not a spring one. This is a seasonal wreath and it does include spring wreath, um, a kind of autumn wreath and a winter one. Uh, I've used a spring one for some inspiration on this little uh, wooden triptych and uh, I've added the spring wreath to the centre here, added some spring lettering and then adapted it to do the outside. So these are quite handy these little um, uh, recipe card packs because you get a little mini worksheet pack, comes in a plastic wallet that you can practice your strokes on. Um, you'll get uh, some strokes you can follow uh, follow on to, um, an example of the finished design, and they come in a variety of subjects, um, some animals, some cute ones, um, so there's lots of different things you can look at and uh, do a, a add to your projects. I mean, some are complete, some are little addition things, there's some that are foliage, and uh, some will uh, just be as I said, complete projects. So, um, yeah, they're worth looking at. So, they are all on the website. Uh, so there's quite a few there. And we've got some, um, a couple of additions. That um, Season Reef one is an additional one to the website now. And they have got their own page, and it's called Recipe Cards. Um, so, check that out. Um, I'll be going back to that in a, a short while. Uh, but now I want to show you um, something that is not a recipe. Uh, this is again with the spring theme. Uh, this is a tulip um, design, um, and uh, I would check out Donna's Wreath of the Month on YouTube. Uh, if you haven't already checked those out, do do look at them because um, there's some brilliant designs, and she's doing a different wreath for every month of the year. Um, and the April one is a tulip design, so that's really good, uh, good one to look for um, and um, so I'm just going to do a little tulip design here I uh, just want to show you this one uh, this is using three of the new colours that we've got on our website um, we've got J Juneberry Blue Peacock and this is an old colour that's come back which is Dioxin Purple uh, so this, if you have never used it before it's a lovely rich purple colour uh, and I've already um, put one coat of this color, these colours down, but I just wanted to um, show you how these uh, flowers are painted. So it's a nice, uh, simple design. I will show you the leaves on another project in a second. A few minutes anyway. Okay, so you kind of base coat a rough egg shape these. Okay, and rinse the brush. I do each of the base of the flowers first. And uh, these are the multi-surface paints. And so they will go on to, as the name suggests, multi-surfaces. So glass, ceramic, wood, card, paper, fabrics, they will paint the fabrics if, we, you, if it's a wearable item I would suggest you add textile medium just to make it softer ok, so that's the Juneberry and lastly the Peacock Blue sorry, Blue Peacock blue the other colours is uh, Prussian blue, which is kind of a blue version of the darks and purple, really. it's a deep rich blue. And once you've got the, this kind of vague egg shape, shape base coated in, you can wipe the 
brush, pick up some white just on the tips of the bristles, and come to the edge and just paint a, a comma really. opened a magazine and believe it or not it had some tulips in there and that's a tulip it looked exactly the same as this just like this pink one actually so up near the top pressure down slide bring this comma in just want one on the tips. Up near the top. Pressure down. Side of the chisel edge. But then if you want to add some more overlapping strokes, you can. always a secret with one stroke, you can always stroke back over it. You won't let anything dry, come back. Um, now, I was actually going to paint some more tulips this side, but now I've decided that I'm going to just put some lettering in there. Uh, and if you're wondering what this is, it's actually a book stand. So the idea is that you can Again, I've used, uh, like the last project, I've used chalk paint. This time I've done a distress finish. This is a wet distress, um, which is basically you put one coat of dark colour on there, let that dry, and then come back with your lighter colour. Just let it dry for a minute or so, then come back with some uh, damp cloth, and just wipe as much of that paint in places just to give this uh, slight distressed look and then uh, around the edges um, and uh, gives a slightly different look to um, allowing it to dry or put some wax on it first and then uh, rub the distressing off um, 
but it's uh, obviously the choice is yours. Now, um, with irises, another spring flower, uh, and again, this um, you can use one of uh, Donna's uh, recipe cards for this, with a variety of irises. I'm going to use this as a guide. Um, and irises uh, are a flower that can be a bit tricky because you're kind of wiggling and moving whilst you're trying to curve the stroke at the same time. So, um, hi, right now I've painted this multi-layered iris type flower using Juneberry multi-surface paint. I'm just going to come in and add some leaves and I'm, I just want to do the leaves because I know a lot of you find uh, the flipped leaf on uh, these kind of spring flowers uh, quite tricky but it's um, just something you have to kind of do without thinking about it really. So if you think about what other, whatever colour is going up first it's going to be that colour going down first. Okay, so you start the chisel edge, put pressure down, keep the brush moving, turn it over, and then it's down. And the secret is just to keep it moving. Use floating medium, and I'll go back over that because I did run out of paint. Pressure down, keep the brush moving, turn it. come with practice. It's also the same movement you use when you're painting um, ribbons. So you can have some on one, lift up to the chisel edge, down, and you get to um, play around with lots of different types of leaves with these flowers. So uh, if I just turn it that way, be honest, the, the ones, if you're right handed, the ones going far to the right are the easiest ones to do. And remember, it always has to keep moving. Now you can do them in two parts. You can go up and then chain and then come back and do it again, uh, do it with a second part, but I prefer to do it in one movement. So push down, keep moving turn the brush over and down. So the light was going up and it's coming back down again. And that's a turned leaf. Okay, and that kind of completes your flower. So, and you can just keep adding as many leaves as you like. Really. Um, lots of spring flowers do tend to have um, quite a lot of leaves. Uh, and always remember, you need floating medium when doing that uh, because it will help the um, paint to move. But you don't need it when you're painting on glass and ceramic because obviously that's a smooth surface and the paint will keep moving on a smooth surface. Okay, so remember, have a look at those um, little teaching guides, the uh, recipe cards. There's lots of different things there. Some are full flowers, some are um, like the foliage. A nice one um, is the greening with a touch of lavender, a nice filler fill of foliage there for different projects um, and um, you know, tassels and ropes and scroll work. Scroll work is a really good one because it's um, uh, a nice little um, accent that you can put on uh, different projects, um, uh, commas and uh, lots of different things like that. So yeah, they're well worth looking at and um, yeah, just enjoy it. Relax. Always relax. Always more enjoyable when you relax. It should be stress free. It should be the thing that makes you forget about stuff and um, you should enjoy it. Just enjoy it. It gets rid of your stress, not creates more. If it's becoming difficult, then you're doing it wrong. Okay? <laughs>